can I help you? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there, and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Krasmazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. He killed himself. No one was implying you were, officer. Where were we? What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. He wasn't pan-fried, he was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with... Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1 p.m. because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. Of course you should. This is your time to shine, Hobo Cop. 
dive into that dumpster for extra content. Just a feeling. A warning from some part of you. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below, and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. Just garbage. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or... that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Not really. All we know is, the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, what's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes, written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? Yes, it is. Look. This plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Boring. Try dangerous. You should do a thorough inventory of that. Be sure some has not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies, organized crime, or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover operatives. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Wow. An armistice caliber 50 knock cannon. Half wrapped in paper tissues. So shiny. It's a giant rifle, and it's very expensive. Not as expensive as that fat string of pearls snaking around the rotten banana peels, however. And is that Cordon Electric's preamp with Electra F2 tubes? It is. That catches quite a price. We're talking 12,000. Easy. Unless you're into hi-fi yourself. No, you won't. Because none of those things are real. They're not actually in there. All you see is food waste and crisp wrappings. 
All you see is a broken mug with a racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Only in its social sensibility. Mm -hmm. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing of the list. It's the legend found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work? Just finish your case, detective. RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least, that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. Maybe you shouldn't be. I mean, you do your job, but that kid is beyond help. And he certainly won't help you. 
You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. The smallest of smiles. That's okay, Nice. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. Of course. Where to? No problem. Excuse me? Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Okay. Of course, I won't hold you back. Can I help you? Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. The Trash Collection Service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you anyway. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. I think fugue states are more your forte, officer. Yes. Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Hello again, sweetie. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Huh, this button looks new. It's probably not connected yet.
It's the letter you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board, with the permeables draw inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare article-free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. 
in our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. There is, for precisely, one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. No, actually. Any ideas? Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. It's proving to be harder than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Arson, petty theft, spousal abuse. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper, some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Three, the topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. But they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copier paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, 
hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Something rattles inside ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. 